hi everyone and welcome back to my channel my name is patience today we are going to be making a shirt and we'll learn how to sew a sleeve placket and attach a cuff to a sleeve so before we get started kindly click the subscribe button if you have done that let's get into it So I'll be drafting on this pattern paper and I'll be using this 3 yards of fabric. Now to know the size of the pattern paper to use, you're going to divide the biggest circumference by 4. Mine is the hip. Quarter of my hip circumference is 11 inches. And I am going to add extra 1, 2, 3 inches for button stand or button band and I am going to add one inch for ease and I'll add one inch for side seam allowance that is 16 inches so I have 17 inches here so that is enough for me the first thing I am going to do is to mark the three inches for the button stand so I'll mark three inches this way And I'll fold the edge of the pattern to the 3 inches this way and secure it with a masking tape. Unfold, this is 1.5 inches. Now I am going to mark half of this 1.5 inches, which is 0 0.75. So mark 0 0.75 all through this way. I'm going to start my measurements from this 0.75 inches and the first measurement I am going to mark is half of my shoulder measurement which is 8 inches so I'll start my measurements from this 0.75 inches now I'll mark 8 inches and I'll add half inch for sewing allowance that is 8.5 inches after doing that I'll mark the width of the neck which is three inches so you can use two and a half or three inches so i'll mark three inches and for the neck depth for the back piece i'll use one inch and for the front piece i will use three inches now using my curved ruler i'll make a curve this way for the back neck and the front neck on the shoulder measurement, I'll come down by one inch for my shoulder slant. And I'll mark half of my armhole measurement, which is eight inches. And I'll mark my shoulder to bust point, which is 10 and a half inches. And my shoulder to waist, which is 17 inches. And my shoulder to hip, which is 26 inches. And I'll add two inch for seam allowance. So this is the chest line, the bust line, the waist line, hip line and the hem line. I'll bring down those eight and a half inches for my shoulder measurement on this chest line and I'll connect the points. I'm going to mark my circumference measurements. My bust circumference is 10 and a half inches. I'm going to add one inch for ease, that is 11 and a half inches. And I'll add one inch for side seam allowance, that is 12 and a half inches. Quarter of my waist circumference is nine inches. I'll add one inch for ease, that is 10 inches. And I'll add one inch for side seam allowance. And on the hemline, quarter of my hip circumference is 11 inches. I'll add one inch for ease, that is 12 inches, and one inch for sewing allowance. So if you want a free shirt, you can use the bust measurement on the waist measurement. To create my armhole, I am going to mark half of this line, which is 3.5 inches. And from the 3.5 inches, I'll go in by half inch for the back armhole. And for the front armhole, I'll go in by three quarter inch. So I'll make a slant line to the shoulder this way. 
and I'll curve the back and the front armhole. So this is a dartless basic shirt. Now if you want to add a waist dart to your shirt, you need your bust pan measurement, which is the distance from one nipple to another. So mine is 4 inches and I'm going to add half inch for sewing allowance, that is 4 and half inches. On the bust line, I'll mark 4 and half inches. And on the hip line, I'll also mark the 4 and half inches, starting from the 0.75. On the bust point, I'll come down by one inch, that is from the four and a half inches, and I'll ensure it is at four and a half inches. And on the hip line, I'll go up by two inches, and I'll ensure it is at four and a half inches. And I'll connect the points. I'll be using one inch for the waist dart. So I'll mark half inch on both sides on the waist line and I'll create my dart. On the shoulder line, I will mark half inch for sewing allowance this way. And back to the dart, I am going to replace the one inch for dart on the side seam. So if you're adding the dart to the shirt, you need to add back the one inch for dart to the side seam. So when you take in your dart, it is going to make up for the one inch. So that is it for the front piece. Now on the back piece, if you like on the center back, you can make a design like a pleat. So I mark out this one inch or you can use 1.5 inches on the center back. If you don't want a design, you can leave it that way. Now I am going to place the front piece on this line so i'll place the 0.75 inches on the one inch if you don't want the design at the back piece you place the 0.75 on the front piece on the folded edge of the back piece so for the back piece i'll cut out the back neck and the back armhole So to add a dart to the back piece, I will use my tracing wheel to trace out the lines. After doing that, starting from the 1 inch for pleat, on the hip line I will mark my bust pan measurement, that is 4 and half inches and I will mark 4 and half inches on my bust line and on the bust line i'll come down by two inches and i'll ensure it is at four and a half inches and on the hip line i'll come up by two inches and i'll ensure it is at four and a half inches i'll connect the points this way i'll also be using one inch for the dart so i'll mark half inch on both sides on the waist line and create my dart I'll cut the back piece on fold and I'll cut out the front neckline and the front armhole and I'll be cutting times two of the front piece and if you want to cut out a yoke for the back piece it depends on the length you want you can use four or five inches and add half inch for hemming allowance so you're just going to fold it this way and trace it out So I've gone ahead to cut it out as you can see and this is going to be on fold. After tracing it out you add half inch for hemming allowance. Now on the side seam you can decide to make a curve shape so you can come up by three or four inches from the 
full length and make a curve this way just to give it extra design at the side seam so i'll do that on the fabric so i've gone ahead to cut it out on my fabric and i added the one inch for the pleats now i am going to sew from the good side by one inch also cut out the front piece on my fabric as you can see and I folded one inch and I fold it again and iron it for my button stand so if you like you can add an interfacing on one inch before you fold it and now from the wrong side I am going to make a top stitch this way so if you like, you can make a top stitch on the folded edge. So I'll do the same thing here. And I'll take in the one inch for my pleat. I've done that. I stitched on one inch from the good side and I ironed it flat. And on the front piece, I've top stitched the button stand. So I'll be joining the front and the back piece. I'll place good sides this way and align it. And I'll be sewing on the half inch on the shoulder for sewing allowance. And I'll also sew on the one inch for side seam allowance. I've done that. I've joined the shoulder and the side seam. And on the back piece, I sewed on half inch on the pleat to keep it in place. After doing that, the next thing I'm going to do is to measure the round neck to cut out the collar and the collar stand. What I have here is 21 inches. So I have a detailed video on how to draft, sew and attach a two-piece shirt collar and a cut together shirt collar. So I'll put the link on the description box below. This is the two-piece collar and the cut together collar. To attach it to the dress, I've notched the midpoint of the collar and I will notch the midpoint of the shirt, that is the center back. And I am going to place good sides this way and pin it down. I'll align the midpoint. And I'll sew by the quarter inch. I've done that. And I am going to fold the raw edges towards the collar this way. And I'll top stitch on the wrong side or the good side. I've done that and it came out really neat. Now I'll be cutting out a sleeve placket with a cuff. So I'll be using this pattern to explain. Assuming this is the wrong side of the sleeve. So I'm going to mark it this way for us to understand. So on the wrong side, I am going to mark the round wrist, which is seven inches assuming it's seven inches i'll mark half of seven inches that is three and a half inches from the folded edge so i'm going to add one and a half inches for pleats and i'll use the remaining one inch for side seam allowance to cut out the slash line for the placket i am going to 
divide this line starting from the one inch for side seam i am going to what i have here is five inches so i'm going to divide the five inches by two which is 2.5 inches from the 2.5 inches i'll come up by four inches this way i'll make sure it is at 2.5 inches I'll connect the points this way. I'll bring the other sleeve and I'll place right sides together this way and I'll align it. I'll cut a slash line ending with a V at the top this way. So I've gone ahead to cut out the placket and the measurement is 2.5 inches by 5.5 inches and what I'm going to do is I'll fold in half inch this way and fold it again to have like one inch. At the top edge I will make like a triangle shape this way. On the fabric, I'll add an interfacing and iron it. After doing that, from the small portion of the sleeve on the wrong side, I am going to double fold, double fold it this way. You want to make it as tiny as possible. And I'll top stitch. On the other side, I'll place the placket. Assuming this is the wrong side of the placket, I am going to place the right side of the placket on the wrong side of the sleeve. That is on the biggest portion of the sleeve. So I'll place the unfolded edge and I'll sew by half inch. I've done that, I've stitched on the half inch. Now I am going to turn it over to the right side this way and I'll turn the placket to the right side also. I'll fold in the raw edges this way and I'll make a top stitch starting from this point and I'll follow the triangle shape and I'll stop at about 1.5 inches and lock it this way. So if I'm sewing it, I'll make sure this part, the other part is stitched. So I've made the top stitch and this is how it is going to come out. I am still going to cut this out on my fabric. I just want us to understand very well. So after doing that, I will mark two inches from this opened edge and i'll mark the three inches for pleats remember i marked one and a half inch on fold so that is three inches and i am going to make the pleats i'll pleat it this way and sew by half inch from the wrong side and i'll sew by one inch for the side seam and attach the cuff so I've gone ahead to cut it out on my fabric. I have a video on how to draft a basic sleeve. I'll put the link below. So the length of the sleeve is going to be 23 inches. So I cut out 20 inches and I added half inch for sewing allowance. That is 20 and a half inches. So I will cut out the remaining three inches on the cuff. So I cut it out on fold and I ironed an interfacing as you can see. So on fold is three and a half inches. I'll be using half inch to join to the sleeve. I have also cut out the placket and this is two and a half inches. And I folded half inch like I said and fold it again. So I'll cut out five and a half inches, like I said. And 
and I am going to make like a triangle shape at the top edge and I'll iron it. My wrist round is 9 inches, so I'll mark half of 9 inches, that is 4 and a half inches. And I'll also mark the 1 and a half inch for pleats. And I'll leave the remaining 1 inch for side seam. After doing that, from the 1 inch for side seam, I'll mark the midpoint. What I have here is 6 inches, so I'll mark the midpoint, that is 3 inches. And from the 3 inches, I'll go up by 4 inches. And I'll make sure it is at 3 inches. And I'll cut a slash line ending with a V shape at the top. Like I explained on the pattern, I've gone ahead to double fold the small portion of the sleeve, as you can see, and I top stitched. And now I am going to attach the placket to the other side. Using the unfolded edge of the placket, I'll place the good side of the placket on the wrong side of the sleeve this way and pin it down. And so by half inch, I've done that and I'll turn it over to the right side this way. I'll fold in the raw edges this way and I'll top stitch. I've done that. Top stitch all through and I made a design this way. To make my pleats from this point, I am going to mark 2 inches and I'll make my pleats with the 3 inches I added for pleats. I'll pin it down and I'll sew by half inch. So I'll place good sides this way and I'll sew by the one inch for side seam. As you can see, I still have the four and a half inches for my wrist round. I've done that and now I am going to attach the cuff. Unfold it is three and a half inches. So I folded half inch on one layer as you can see. Now I'll place good sides this way. So I cut out 10 inches and my round sleeve, my round wrist is nine inches. So I added one inch for sewing allowance. So I'll be sewing both sides by half inch. I've done that. So what I did was I sewed both sides by the half inch and I notched around the edge and turned it inside out and I made sure I iron it. Now I am going to attach it to the sleeve. I'll place good sides this way and I'll sew by half inch. I've done that. Now I'll fold in the raw edges this way and I'll top stitch with the other folded edge. I've done that and it came out really neat and beautiful. So you can top stitch from the good side or the wrong side of the sleeve. So that is it for the sleeve. I am going to attach the sleeve to the dress. I'll ensure I align the front armhole and the back armhole and sew by half inch. 
so to make a design at the side seam I am going to come up by two inches this way and I am going to make a curve line this way and blend it to the hem and I'll cut it out and hem the shirt I've done that I have attached the sleeve and I have also hem now I am going to mark out the button hole so from the collar stand I am going to mark two and a half inches And from the two and a half inches, I'll mark half inch for the button hole. And from the half inch, I'll mark two and a half inches. From the two and a half inches, I'll mark half inch for button hole. So I'll continue doing that. I'll mark two and a half inches space and half inch for the button hole. So I'll make sure I take my measurement on the midpoint of the button stand and I'll fix the button also on the midpoint of the button stand. I've done that and I also attach a button on the cuff. If this was helpful, kindly give this video a thumbs up and also click on the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notification bell to be updated when I upload a new video. Thank you guys for watching. Bye!